Hey, welcome back to Mastering EDM with Logic Pro. And today I'm going to be covering delay in our sixth video here and in introducing mixing. And um, uh, delay is, it's an effect primarily, but it can be used for uh, for other things. And I'll talk about those it, it briefly. Um, but I wanna mainly talk about the main thing delay is used for. Um, delay works off of the premise of having, um, let's put it on the baseline here. You can do some really cool things with delay on a baseline. Um, so delay takes the audio and it delays it. Um, it's, re it's a very simple explanation there, but it can get very complex and I'll show you how. Uh, so I'm gonna pull up, um, echo is the best way to do it simply. Um, so the time is one eighth of a, um, of a uh, bar here. Um, so one, this would be a quarter note, which would be once every beat. But um, so this is a basically um, every, every beat and every beat, every in between the beat. So, uh, but that's that's just a little bit of music there. Anyway, uh, so now the repeat amount here, I'm going to set to zero. Um, color, I'm going to set to, I believe if I set this to zero, it just puts it in the middle, yep. And dry, I'm going to make 100%, and wet, I'm gonna make zero. So right now, as it is, the sound should be unaffected, and you should just hear the original sound. Let's pull that up. So you got this bass line, nothing cool. Now, if I do something here, and um, so I have this set to 1 8 and I turn this down all the way and turn the wet up, this means now it's delaying it completely. The dry is the original signal, the wet is the affected signal. That's the way pretty much all plugins work. You can't hear a difference. But if I play it with the rest of the song, you'll be able to hear the difference. This will be delayed by a, uh, an eighth note. And you'll, you'll be able to tell because it won't start on beat like it should. Sounds kind of funky there. So, uh, and I could even, I could delay that more and it'll show you like how much of a difference it makes. So it was a whole beat there that it didn't do anything. So I'm gonna set this back to 1.8. And um, now this is where you mix things. So I'm gonna have the original signal come out completely, and then I'm gonna bring on in a little bit of the delayed signal. So we'll have two. We'll have the first one, which is which comes in on the beat, and then we'll have a second one that comes right after it, um, after after a, an eighth note. So. So it sounds doubled up, and that's because essentially it is. Um, now this is where d um, delay gets very interesting. Um, this is repeat, but typically it's called feedback, and I'll talk about that in a second. But if I turn this up, it gives me it repeats the um, the wet signal more times, and um, it'll get very busy quickly when I start playing this. Um, so you won't be able to tell exactly what's going on. But then I'll show you on a single note what it does. So you can hear there's there's a couple more, and uh, but if I go to a single note here, it'll really show you. I'm only clicking it once, and yet it's repeating that many times. And if I turn this up really high, it goes for quite a while. So um, that's that's that that's repeat there. Color I'll talk about in a different. Um, a uh, different plugin here because it makes more sense when I go into stereo delay. Um, okay, so stereo delay, it's called feedback. And a lot of other delay plugins, it's called feedback. And the reason being because the, uh, the original premise of delays was that it would delay the signal and if you turn up the feedback, it'd feed that delayed signal back into the delay unit and it kind of go in a circle, getting smaller and smaller until it eventually the volume just faded out. So that's why you get this, um, this sort of pattern where the sound, it starts out loud, you have the first one and then you have the next one, it's quieter and it just keeps on going because it's just how much signal you're feeding into it. Now, the interesting thing about this one is if you turn this up all the way, um, it it's the uh, the effect is very prominent and um, it, it builds quite a bit is it shows you how much if you feed back the entire signal into it um, how much it really affects the sound and how much it's not just going down 
Um, Because typically if you have like, uh, if you just feed 50% back, then you feed 50% back and then next you feed 50% of that 50%, which is 25%, and you just keep on going and get smaller. But if you do almost the entire signal, then watch what happens. It just kind of keeps going and it's not noticeably getting quieter. So I have to stop this here to stop it if I can. Yes, turn that off, thank you. Okay, so um, so that's what feedback is. It's all about creating a little loop here. And um, now this, this, is, uh, this stereo delay is a, a little bit more complex than the other one in that you could change um, what you hear on the right and the left side. So you could change the delay time. Uh, this is on a, a quarter note and you could change it to uh, an eighth note and then if you do this uh, if you have them on different times it kind of bounces back and forth except for I should probably turn this down okay that 48 48 sounds good there we go so it kind of bounces back and forth and um, and that that can give you an, uh, an interesting interesting a variety of things to make so tone on the other one or was it color I, I don't remember for sure but um, that is basically it's it's affecting this um, now what that means is you have your original sound and your delayed sound is affected by this uh, these cuts. So high cut and low cut. If you pull this up, it sounds thinner. And if you pull this down, it sounds darker. So that's what color essentially does. It basically just moves this and you can place this anywhere you want um, and have it any size to fit whatever you're trying to do. So you could get some interesting uh, color to it, um, but that's basically the um, the the fundamentals of using delay. Um, now, there's one other thing I want to cover, which is very short delays. Um, I could, I guess, I'll do it here. Um, so I'll turn off beat sync, and I'm going to turn this to 10 milliseconds. And now, if you listen, you can't really hear it. Now, actually, what you do here, uh, I'm going to pull this up a little bit more. Uh, Pull that down. Now, if I turn this off, it sounds it has a lot more body when it's off. Come on. And then if I turn it off, it, and the reason is. It's delay. The delay is so short that you get some. You get phasing, which I believe I talked about in an earlier video. And um, what that basically is is you have um, you have these waveforms that go up and down, and um, if they go in the opposite direction, they cancel each other out. So these are so close that they're actually canceling each other out. Now I'm going to bring this up and show you what short delays sound like, because they start to get kind of like a fluttery sound. Uh, let's see here, uh, 90, there we go. It's not quite, let's try 130. Ooh okay. Still no. Nope. 250. Oh, that's because it's off, stupid me. Okay, so let's try this again. Set this to 70. I was wondering why I wasn't doing anything. There we go. So now you get this flutter sound. And this is actually, um, it's, it's a very interesting thing you could do. And if you time them slightly differently too, you get uh, a nice stereo effect. Although this one goes on longer. So I, I might want to turn up the feedback on this one just to make it so they both balance out. It's a very interesting sound. It actually kind of sounds like reverb. And um, I'm going to be going into reverb in my next video here, but reverb is fundamentally a whole ton of delays just mashed up on top of each other. And, um, and you get this very spacious sound. Um, so that's my next video. Um, but I, I pr I've pretty much covered everything you need to know by way of delay. Um, now I will tell you uh, Logic's Delay Designer is very powerful, but it's also a little bit hard to work with um, because you could you could get some very.
complex patterns. So let's see. Uh, oh, this one's better. Falling pattern. So it's kind of like when you drop something down a um, a big cavern or something, you like drop a rock down, and it kind of does like this sort of sound. So um, you could do very complicated stuff with this. Where you could essentially draw in where you want the delays to show up, as opposed to the other one where it's based entirely off of time. So this is rather complex. Um, I I don't use this plugin too much just because. Um, for me, it's too complicated because uh, I, I typically just use simple delays um, to get not sample delays. That's a whole different thing. Uh, I'll, t I'll show that in a second here because that is worth touching on. But uh, I typically just use stereo delay or other simple delay plugins because um, I want most of mine to be basically the, I want the delay to either repeat at the same interval or repeat at a increasing or decreasing interval and nothing else more complicated than that. And what I have with these simpler plugins is much more manageable and easier to work out than with Delay Designer. But you can do some very interesting th stuff with Delay Designer. Now the last thing I want to touch on is um, sample delay here. And what this does is it lets you delay the sound signal by very short amounts. There is no wet and dry. It is entirely wet. Uh, so you need to make sure you, you realize that when you start using this. But um, I'll show you what this does. So we have this bass line that's pretty much down the center. Whoops. I forgot to pull the distortion off then, I think. Oh, no, it's because I have I turned the gain up all the way. So it's distorting. Brilliant. So it's more or less down the center. And if I pull this up, it's going to delay the right side by 505 samples. That's not a lot time-wise. And I'll show you what that does. It doesn't get like a... Um, left, right, left, right, left, right sort of sound. It's very interesting because it gives you a more spread out sound. So you get this you get this stereo sound and if you have mono tracks, that's a great way to spread them out, but you have to be careful because they do it does kind of cause it to sound like it's leaning to one side. Um, and the side that is first is the side that it typically sounds like it's leaning to. So, um, so, so that's one of the interesting uses of delay, and you can pull this up uh, longer than usual to get that kind of um, you know left-right sort of sound. So it's a very interesting plugin to mess around with, and it does some pretty cool things. Uh, but yep, that's uh, that's a delay there. I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, it's all it's basically works on the uh, the idea of taking a signal, delaying it, and uh, feeding it back in a certain amount, depending on how much you want, until it uh, fades out. So uh, so that yep, that's delay. And thank you for watching this video. I have a whole bunch of other videos. If you haven't watched them yet, feel free to check them out. Uh, they're pretty cool. And um, I'll be releasing another video next Saturday because uh, that's my schedule here. Um, but uh, I may do ones in between if I get questions, comments, or uh, or requests by way of videos because uh, I, I have enough time on my hands right now, um, but I don't know how long that'll last. I have enough time on my hands right now to where uh, if there's a video you'd like me uh, on something you'd like me to cover, feel free to just ask and... Um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll also try to make a video on it if I feel that it's it's got enough content to where I should make a video out of it. So, um, yep, feel free to comment, subscribe, like, and everything like that. And thank you for watching.